Hi folks, welcome back. And as always, thank you so much for joining. So today I'm going to move on to what I'm going to consider part two of something I began uh, in making uh, packaging, bioplastic packaging, uh, using milk. And I've run across something uh, in doing so that I'm going to share today. Some very exciting results, and I'm going to share them with you. And we're going to get started right away. This is regular styrofoam. Uh, it's used in packaging. And uh, I'm going to show you how to make uh, renewable styrofoam using only milk. So now uh, I'm very excited to present this today as today for me is the concluding day of the Climate Summit in Scotland and where some very powerful people met and uh, have contributed uh, some uh, very powerful language and commitment to the world. And uh, so it's a very exciting day to present this and to give away something I'm going to call uh, Jasonite, named uh, for someone very special. And uh, we're going to uh, talk about a replacement DIY, if you wish, of styrofoam. Now, this is typical styrofoam here. And uh, it's used in packaging. Here's another variation right here. The process for making my Jasonite will give you a styrofoam made from dried bits of the casein component. And I'm going to show you how I process this. Now, what makes this work is the process. So uh, I'm going to fast forward through some stuff for you uh, that we covered in the first video. And then we're going to discuss Jasonite much more closely. Now, how Jasonite came about was something went wrong. Now, as an inventor, you have ideas. And most of them, your, your ideas are a bust. But you always want to look at your failures and you want to see, is there something more that can be done to what I have in my hand versus what I was trying to go for? Now, continue to go for what you want, but look at your failures more closely and see uh, what can be done. And in this case, uh, Jasonite was discovered. So, I think I've gone around the table. Let's get into it.
All right, so this is the um, soap dish made from uh, casein that I attempted to make uh, at the end of the last video where I was making a uh, other products, packaging products, such as this or this. But it didn't work out so well. <laughs> There was a lot of shrinkage and uh, virtually unusable. You would have to work with this a lot. Uh, the problem is the moisture, of course. So once it dries out, you're left with this. But is this a disaster? Or is are we done yet with the formula, the processing that we've done so far on this? Are we done yet? And the answer is no, we're not. So I continue to process this as a feedstock and I came up with jasonite which is a renewable packaging material that expands considerably when heated it can be it's very hard it's very strong it is still brittle but I haven't added a uh, plasticizer to it yet but it is just as strong as uh, styrofoam this is a piece of styrofoam here, and uh, the styrofoam breaks even easier. So, what I'm going to do is show you how that I pro continued processing this into this right here. And then we're going to take it another step further because that's what we do. We always see if we're done yet. So I'm going to take some of these crumbs here. So let's get started on that now. So how I continued to process this was um, I took just simply a piece of this. <laughs> and uh, my, my intention was to uh, soften it in the microwave. Uh, and I've done that before. Uh, if you refer back to, I'm going to link the video. I did this uh, a few years ago. And uh, to soften this, uh, to reshape it. But uh, because I didn't remember exactly how long I softened it, I assumed it was 45 seconds, so that's what I did. But it was actually, if I refer back to my own video, it was 15 second bursts. But if you let it go a bit longer, uh, you get something else. So what I did was I just placed a hunk in there. Uh, there's a tef piece of Teflon on the bottom of this glass because you never know. Okay. So we're going to let it go 45 seconds and uh, then we're going to look at that. Now when I made this, I think it goes like that. I did the same process. And uh, this top piece of Teflon is where I pushed down out to see if I could mold it. And yes, you can. You have to be very quick. Because <laughs> once the heating process has stopped, uh, that's pretty much it. So. Now I also tried to take little bits of it uh, in a jar and swell those to get them to stick together. And uh, we will. <coughs> and here is the beginning of where it begins to swell and uh, stick together. And uh, these pieces, this were used to be several pieces, will swell into each other inside a combined space like a mold. Uh, I don't have anything that I think could take the temperatures, perhaps. Uh, I will uh, attempt that later on to see if we can mold something. But uh, to give the formula away uh, to anyone who wants to make uh, DIY renewable styrofoam and uh, made from milk. Now, we're going to go dig deeper into why milk? Uh, what's the significance of this and why even do it? And uh, 
when you compare it to uh, oil, the energy input to making a package from milk instead of oil, the energy input is roughly one ten thousandth of what it takes to make this, which is plastic. Now, uh, in my opinion, plastic is no solution, especially for something that you eat off of, because, of course, plastics release dioxins when they're heated. Uh, it's simple. It's a diatomic particle, and why would you want to do that? Uh, uh, so there are renewable options, and uh, milk is a very sustainable option in the fact that uh, we can get it from milk, waste milk. Uh, we can produce more milk. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, we don't produce very much. Now, we hear a lot of negative press about cows because they produce methane, this sort of thing. But uh, actually, they've addressed, uh, they've come up with some unique ideas to address uh, the problems with having a lot of cows where they even uh, produce methane from the uh, cow pies and uh, in a biodigester or even they uh, recapture the methane and uh, they'll even uh, uh, capture it from uh, methane. Our energy comes from cow farts. So we're using even more of the cow uh, in our uh, daily living and we can make uh, packaging from milk, uh, energy from uh, the, uh, the cow's excrement. Uh, so it, the, the list goes on. And uh, I can't understand a, a lot of negative press, uh, but I'm very excited about uh, what people are talking about at the summit in Scotland. They're bringing forth a lot of uh, issues that uh, need to be addressed, and they were addressed. It was great to hear some of the stuff, and one of it is uh, the impact that uh, global warming has on uh, smaller nations. So. Uh, Global warming is being addressed in a very real thing now, and what we have to do is not only reduce transportation of using uh, fossil fuels, uh, we also have to think about the other things that we make from oil that we take uh, for granted and can easily be uh, replaced with easily with other options. And that's important. That's important. Uh, the time to do that is now. And uh, we have no greater initiative than what occurred in Scotland. Uh, so let's get rolling on these. Uh, now, um, I spoke about the, uh, the one ten thousandth of energy input into a product like that. That's, not, that's just the short term. It goes on and on and on. Because uh, if we want to make another package from this, this can go into the landfill and produce uh, compost. Or we can recycle it if we want. Now, I've said it before, and that is people don't recycle. We throw everything into the trash by nature, and that's what we need to address. What goes in the trash it needs to become either compost or we can recycle it at the source, and that is to recycle this and to turn it into another package or even another product made from uh, even more refined casein is we need to add vinegar and grind it up again. And uh, so uh, we can do this over and over again, or as we used to say when I was young, until the cows come home. So, <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's close this out. And there may be a part three, and I want to thank you so much for watching. It's been a lot of fun presenting this to you. And... Uh, Okay, so some of the attributes very quickly of this. Uh, naturally, casein is air proof or it has, it delivers a superior oxygen barrier to plastic. So it is an amazing choice for packaging food. And uh, so uh, we have, uh, it's stronger as you can see. And uh, it's uh, incredible thermal insulation. Now, uh, styrofoam. Very weak, very weak. Uh, you know what flame can do to styrofoam, but uh, casein can take direct heat, uh, a s substantial direct heat for a considerable amount of time. Uh, so it's, uh, it's good in packaging. It has other qualities. Uh, the list goes on. Uh, we can uh, 
even mix this with uh, shellac and make it waterproof. For those of you that want to make a waterproof package using milk. Okay, I want to thank you for watching and uh, you take care. Bye-bye.